well, we're going to have a look at a number of problems out of chapter 4. Chapter 4 is one of the harder uh, chapters, and it's got a lot, lot of new material in it that's not material you've seen in first year. So it's quite a hard chapter, and I'll do a couple of um, extra ones out of this chapter. So in the early section of this, we're looking at perpendicular spaces. And there are different methods, different ideas you need to do each different problem. So although I'm going to do this one, the method of this one will be useful in some problems, but it won't necessarily solve all the similar problems. You'll need to think about what's going on. So here I have W, which is the span of this vector in R3. And I hope at this stage you're immediately thinking of the geometry underlying this, that the span of this vector is going to be a line in R3. So this perpendicular space are all the vectors that are perpendicular to this line. So again, think about the geometry of it. So if I've got a line, imagine this vector here, I want all the vectors perpendicular to that. Well, if you think about it for a bit, you'll see that any vector which is perpendicular to that is going to lie on some plane where this is a right angle. So we can, we can that, that, that gives me several different ways of solving this particular problem. So I'm just looking for something which builds this plane for which this vector is a normal, for which one's, this is perpendicular to it. And when you think of perpendicularity, you should be thinking of dot product. So dot product zero. So to answer this question, W perp, I can just write down the answer without doing very much work at all because all I really want now I want two vectors that lie on this plane any two vectors I like lying on that plane as long as they are um, linearly independent as long as they're not multiples of each other and we know that vectors are at right angles if the dot product is zero so I want a right angle there and a right angle there the dot product is zero, so I've just got to cook up two vectors that are perpendicular to this one. Well, it's going to do that by pure thought. I'm not going to do any serious calculations. If I kill the middle one and take one of those and three of those, that will work. Just check the dot product works. You get three plus zero minus three is zero, so that's perpendicular to it. And I want another one that's linearly independent with this one. Well, I may as well get rid of the first entry. I'll take one of those and four of those. And that's obviously dot product zero with this vector. And these are obviously independent because you can't make one from the other by multiplying it. And that'll do. That's the end of the problem. So that's the perpendicular space. And notice that, again, think about dimensions. The dimension of this line is one dimensional. So that means the dimension of the perpendicular space in R cubed has to make up the rest of the space. So it's got to be two dimensional. And of course, as we see, the perpendicular space is two dimensional. Think about these ideas as you're doing all of these problems. Mm -hmm.